morning and welcome to the Rethink Youth Conference here in Kansas City. My name is Chase Owings. I'm Lizzie Broswick and in our presentation as well is Haley Wilson. But she graduated at semester so she couldn't be here with us today and we're from Florida Sage High School. And welcome to the first actual student-led conference here in Kansas City. It was pretty important that we got to lead because, you know, our voices need to be heard on what we need from education. We were asked to define the student voice and really the student voice, it's us. We, we know what we need. We know what needs to be changed as time goes on. We know how we need to learn. And it's important that people kind of really listen in a sense because we've, we've gone through the educational system all the way up till now. It's 12 years of learning and differences and changes, but the changes always haven't been for the best. We have, the times are changing. It's time for change in the education system. Our presentation is over the current grading scale being an A through F system and how we believe we should change it to a one through four system. We believe it's important because a one through four system can show proper feedback. That way you can fix what you don't understand and get more help in certain areas and be more prepared for life. So please enjoy our presentation. Thank you for joining us, everybody. Today we're going to be giving a presentation on how grades are outdated and how they don't properly represent the learning that should be achieved. All right, so a little bit about Fort Osage High School, where, which is where we all attend. So Fort Osage is a unique mix of suburban and rural people. There's about approximately 1,400 students, and we're located in eastern Independence, Missouri. So my name is Haley Wilson and my plans for high school are currently undecided, but next semester I'm planning on working full time since I'm graduating at semester. And this project has helped me learn how to research more thoroughly and has taught me how to use my life experiences throughout high school to teach others. Hi everybody, my name is Chase Owings. After high school, I just plan on getting out and going straight working on the family farm. This project has taught me a lot about organizational skills and uh, being a team player. Hello, I'm Lizzie Braswick and my plans for after college are either go to community college and then a four-year university or go straight to four-year four -year university. I haven't quite decided what I want to do yet. And what I think we gained from this project is how to work as a group and how to research different topics and then come together and put it all together and present it. So we as students feel that grades don't accurately represent us fairly and how we decided this topic is we brainstormed things that we feel like impact us now and will also impact us down the road. And we think this is important because grades affect us throughout our entire high school experience as well as college and where our future will take us. All right, so our problem statement is that the grading scale doesn't accurately reflect a student's mastery of a subject. And in quotes, for all the time, effort, time, invest, intentions, teacher, invest in the reams of grade reports. We are lying to ourselves and to our students' parents, cheating our students out of a clear and accurate feedback on their academic process and contributing to the greater illusion that grades are an accurate reflection of a skill mastery. And that was according to Jessica Leahy, an English teacher. So this slide is just a little bit about the history of grades in the education system. So grades in education have been in place for ages. The earliest found evidence of grades in school is from 1646 at Harvard, said grades were used for exit exams. And by the time of the Civil War, grades were a normalcy in the world of ed education. So the point of including this slide in our presentation is that we feel like the grading system is outdated. Grades were created for a time period that is very different than how our time looks now. Just a few factors that we feel like create that difference is that for one, class sizes back then were a lot smaller than they are now. And we also don't have technology, which is a very big factor in how the grading system has evolutionized. 
So as high school students, we have realized that grades impact many different areas of our life now and down the road. So grades can affect things like college admission. The better your grades are, the more likely you'll be admitted into a college. They affect sports eligibility in high school and in college because typically they don't go for the players that have the worst grades. And then they also affect scholarships. Typically, if you want to get a decent sized scholarship, you have to have a certain grade point average and then at graduation, you obviously have to meet a certain grade in order to graduate with a bunch of classes that you take from your freshman year to your senior year. And then jobs. I know personally, whenever I applied for my first job, they did ask for my grade point average. They asked what my overall grades were. So that's something that's important too, because jobs don't want to hire, you know, the failing student. So grades impact many different aspects of life. Typically, if you're a student that has good grades, you're associated with getting many of those things that I mentioned. But if you have bad grades, then usually you don't get to be accepted for scholarships, college admission, things like that. So grades do affect us a lot as students. So a really big aspect of this presentation was that we surveyed many different teachers from Fort Osage High School, asking them questions about the current grading system and kind of what their opinion was on that. So here's a list of their responses. So the first question we asked them is, do you think that the grading skill gives an accurate representation of a student's mastery of a subject? And in conclusions, teachers basically said no. They don't feel like it really gives an accurate rep representation on how well a student actually mastered the subject, which is something that's really important to consider. Another question that we asked them is if the grading system could be improved. If so, how? And many teachers said that, yes, they do think that the grading system could be improved, but the real question is how could this be improved, which is something that we're trying to solve throughout this presentation. And then we also asked if they believed that there's a difference between grades and feedback in the classroom. And teachers did agree that there is a difference between grades and feedback, but they mentioned to me that they didn't really feel like students paid a lot of attention to the feedback. So they think, well, what's the point if the student's not going to pay attention to it? And then another question that we asked the teachers was, whenever you offer student feedback on how well they're performing, do you see better results in the student? And this question was kind of mixed. Some teachers said, yeah, they do think that the student performs better whenever they offer feedback. And then some of them said that they didn't really feel like it mattered because same thing as last time, they don't think the student pays attention to the feedback. We also sur surveyed a number of our peers, and these are the general responses we got. So for the first question, we asked, or what value do grades hold? And they said that they help you get into college, and they also help teachers understand how well you're doing in a classroom. And the next question was, what are the impact of grades? And they said it impacts their younger life, so starting out at a young age, going all the way through high school and finishing high school. Grades impact a lot of the things that you can do. It impacts your eligibility for school activities, like sports, band, stuff like that. And then it also impacts your life after high school, going into college, if that's what you choose to do. And it helps you see if you can get into a good college. So the next question was, do grades matter and why? And they said that grades do matter while you're going to school, but after high school, if you're not going straight into college, it doesn't matter after that. And it also decides if you can get into a good college, but some people might, might not go to college right after high school. So the next question was, if you were to get an F on an assignment or test, how would it make you feel and why? The responses were about the same. There are a lot of people, it makes them feel bad and disappointed, but it's not the end of the world that they got a bad grade and they're just disappointed in themselves. It makes them want to uh, try harder next time. And if you get an A on an, ass on an assignment, does that motivate you or does it not affect you and how so? It makes them feel good. It makes them feel accomplished that they did well on their assignment and they're understanding what they're doing. And another response was it doesn't affect them because they are already a straight A student. So it's just another one in the grade book for them. And the next question was, does feedback from teachers help? And 
they believe that feedback from teachers does help if it's constructive and it helps them understand what they could do on their assignment to make their grade better next time if it wasn't a good grade. And if it was a good grade, it just shows that the teacher sees that and understands. And the next question was, would you rather have an A through F grading system or a one through four grading system? And students preferred an A through F grading system, but we believe that's on familiarity because they we all grown up having an A through F grading system. So it would be weird to try and change it now. So I think that's, we think that's why they chose an A through F grading system. From both surveys, we've seen similarities and differences between the teachers and the students. Students know that grades affect them in high school and their future after high school going into college. And teachers don't think that grades accurately assess knowledge that students have of a subject. And both teachers and students agree feedback is beneficial to students when grading assignments. So we've come up with a couple of solutions to our said problem statement. One being uh, the current situation is computer-based learning. A couple of pros is it's more convenient for both teachers and students, especially with COVID going on right now. Some of us may be here on a hybrid schedule, so being at home and being here may be good for some of us, but not of a lot of us. There are a lot of virtual kids, which uh, make it probably easier for them, maybe, or maybe not, not for sure. And uh, it takes like less time for us to do assignments virtually than it does pen and paper. But on the con side of everything, you know, the pen and paper connection is a really great thing between students and there's less room for a student to improve when you're just kind of clicking through answers, trying to get the assignment done. Pretty sure we've all done that at one point. And it's easier for a student to just adjust and actually comprehend what they're learning. Although computer-based learning seems to be more convenient for teachers and students, especially nowadays, it just doesn't learn, like we can't learn the correct way because our brain can't make the pencil to paper connection and actually pick up the information in which we need to, you know, move on and pass said class. Instead of computer-based learning, we decided that uh, hands-on learning is a really effective form of understanding a subject, be it math, science, history. It brings that connection to your brain that uh, initially, you know, comprehends the subject a little more. And then writing by hand connects you with the words and allows your brain to focus on said words, understand them and learn from them. Writing by hand activates more parts of the brain than typing. And then for in-class feedback, providing feedback emphasizes the process of learning instead of worrying about the final grade. So uh, in conclusion to this slide, it basically means that we're instead of giving an A, A through F system, we're gonna change essentially change over to a one through four system being one that you really don't know what you're doing and you need a little bit of help, a four that you've mastered the subject and like you're good to move on. I'm pretty sure some of us had that in grade school. I'm not sure about other districts, but I know here at four, we had that when we were pretty sure it was kindergarten through sixth grade. We had a one through four system and that's how, you know, you got to move on. As for feedback, being transparent with students and actually telling them what they need to do to pass or be better at a subject. Strive for consistency is a big one because if a student is responding to well with a goal or a method of meeting the goal, don't change the way they're providing. You know, everybody has their ways of learning. Not everybody's the same. It's different everywhere. Teachers can offer a student more feedback tailored to their specific needs in hopes to help a student better comprehend what areas of improvement they need. In a sense, just teachers need to be more specific on what goals we need to accomplish to be able to move on, as well as like presenting the feedback carefully. I know some of us don't really take constructive criticism. Um, we feel like it may be an attack on us or it may seem like we're not smart enough. And then involve learners in the process. So our proposals, instead of letter grades, we'd like to see a system based on hands-on learning, a one through four system, kind of uh, encouraging a uh, deeper depth of learning and consistency. We believe that grades should be based on how much knowledge a student is demonstrating using a one through four grading system, like I said earlier. For example, a student is graded on how much knowledge they've incorporated into their work. A student may get a two at first, but the ability to work out a problem may, you know, bring them up to a four later. If they spend more time soaking the material up and actually learning instead of just meeting said requirements to move on. 
All right, so to make this happen, we would overhaul the educational expectations and uh, understanding. So toss out the old grading scale that we've used for so long, which would make it, you know, it's outdated. We've used it since 1646. We need something new at this point. We need to make sure that everybody is actually learning every subject. So we're actually prepared for the real world. And then define, examine and implement specific standards, which is like develop and spend time understanding a specific state or district's standard requirements. This will take time and process to, to connect it, current assignments to standards and then provide the time for teachers, districts, and colleges to understand. This will not immediately resonate with everybody. That's the issue that we would face at first was it, it just, it was not going to help everybody at one time. But if we all slowly move into a one through four grading system, it may be easier in the long run. And then our goal is ultimately we want to see future students succeed in classes based on their knowledge, not jumping through hoops and completing assignments simply for a grade. We'd like to see districts implement plans to allow successful students to reach standard requirements and not necessarily course requirements. Uh, we would like to say thank you for allowing us to do this presentation and for joining us. And if you have any questions, feel free to join the discussion board. What we expected going into this presentation was that more students would like to change from an A through F grading system to a one through four grading system. But what we learned was more students would like to stay with an A through F grading system instead of switching to a one through four. But we believe that it'll impact education positively if we switch to a one through four because it'll help students know where they're struggling more and help show teachers where they can give feedback to students and help them improve to the next level. We hope that if you're a leader at your school that you would revise our presentation and see where you can implement any of these to your curriculum. And if you're a student, we would like to, if you would talk to your principal to see if you can help them implement any of this into their curriculum. And we are now open for questions.